Okay, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, uh, roll call. Um, Alder Ackley? Here. Um, Alder Dean? Here. Uh, Alder Person uh, Heideman is excused, and Alder Person Feldy is excused. Alder Salazar, I'm here. We can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. We'll skip agenda item number four since we all really know each other. Um, agenda item number five, approval approval of minutes for the January 10th, 2024 meeting. Looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Great. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Chair votes aye. aye. Motion carries. That's okay. Uh, agenda item number six, just in time. Uh, RO number 90-23-24 by Police Chief Christopher Demigowski, pursuant to section 50- or 30-50 of the Municipal Code, submitting a quarterly report showing the benchmark measurements of the Police Department for the period commencing October 1 of 2023 and ending December 31st of 2023. Good afternoon. Hi. Oh. So you have the report in front of you. The, the highlights are as follows. Part one crime, there was a dis decrease in part one crime for the year to date in comparison to the same period last year, um, 856 to 888. Crimes against persons was flat, 177 this year, 176 the year before. Um, and there was a decrease in crimes against property, 679. Um, in 2023 versus 712 in 2022. Traffic accidents for the year um, 2023 were down slightly, 1,390 versus 1,418 in 2022. And then a decrease in involuntary commitments, again, 110 to 138. Um, I would also um, just point out a, a couple of things. Traffic accidents, our, our goal has really been over the last 10 years to try to keep them under 1,500. Historically, um, they've been as high as 2,500 mm -hmm. um, and about 1,900 when I first got here. So although um, aggressive driving and um, people not paying attention, distracted driving, are, I think problems everywhere. Um, we're, we're still doing okay as far as the, the accident rate, I think we'd like to have them lower. And I would say if, um, how do I tell you this? We're not able to get anywhere close to the kind of deployments around that that we would like to do. Um, if you ask Matt, I think Matt would remember in 2010, 11, 12, we did a whole lot of, um, deployments around traffic using our, our DDAX approach. So um, talked about that before. It's essentially where we identify hot spots in the city, both crime-wise and traffic-wise, and layer them over each other and um, deploy people to those areas so that we can affect both. Um, we still do a lot of that, but nowhere near um, the amount that we would like just because we don't have the unobligated time. Um, so that's always a goal to keep doing that. Um, the fact that involuntary commitments are, are down somewhat significantly shows that we're making some progress there. We hope to keep having success with both the co-responder program and with some of the changes that the county is making that, that hopefully that will free up some time so we can do some more of a, um, deployments around traffic. Um, and then the crime stuff, I would just point out that um, some of the numbers there are are breathtaking to some degree, if I can use that term. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at some of these numbers, um, in, prior to 2010, um, burglaries were in the 300s, sometimes 420, I think, in like 2007. So to have 65 of them is quite an accomplishment. Our thefts were over 2,000 prior to 2010. This year they're at 585, so really the same thing. Um, motor vehicle thefts, we had a really good year, 19 this past year. Again, if you look back, and, but there are 60, 70 
those were the kind of numbers that we saw in the early 2000s in Sheboygan. And when you look at all the other communities, it's it's quite the opposite. So you've seen in most most city really um, large increases in motor vehicle thefts. A lot of it tied to the ignition issue issues, the Kias. with Kias and and Hondas and that. But mm. but still, for for what we're seeing, um, and of these, I didn't look at these 19, but I would bet you it's the same thing. Probably 15 of them are people who left their keys in the car or a friend or a family member is the one taking it. So in the year prior to 2022, we had nine, 29 motor vehicle thefts. 27 of those were people leaving their keys in the car or a friend or family member stealing that car. So. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, on the, like the theft and license and stuff, uh, is, is that somewhat too a little bit better, uh, better educating? The public is that somewhat doing it? Or is I, it I think it's a combination of things. Some of it, um, I think, is um, how do I say this? Changes in, in some of the crime that's going on. You see more white collar crime going on now. Okay. But I think a lot of it is the awareness that we've tried to create, working with neighborhood organizations, pushing stuff out in social media, Lock your cars. and then the yeah the efforts that we made around locking your cars and, and those programs that we put in, in place. So we still see spikes. Mm -hmm. So I haven't checked in in the office yet, but I can see from my ring notifications that we had um, two or three um, entries to autos on the near, near north side last night. And I know last week we had a couple, maybe one, one on the west end of the city, but the county had a couple. Okay. Um, but when we're seeing those, we're seeing two or three, mm -hmm. um, and then we're responding and getting people in the right areas quick enough that, that it's stopping where in 2010 we would get 20, 30. Um, so, so it's a combination of things. I think yeah. us recognizing yeah. patterns quicker okay. and citizens doing their part better. Mm -hmm. um, and that's even, I, I need some wood to knock on here, but <laughs> <laughs> even the package sure. steps that, that a lot of communities are seeing. Mm -hmm we're not seeing them to that level we have some most of ours are happening like in apartments where they have a common area where mm. they're getting dumped and somebody else in the, the apartment is stealing them we're not having the significant what i would call porch pirate issue that that a lot of communities are having um, and there ain't much that we can do about that it, again really just bad business practices in, in my view if you Think about when we were all kids, you couldn't get a package from UPS without answering the door and signing yeah. for it. Otherwise, yeah. you got that, that note that you missed it. And now it's just all dumped out there where it's, it's free for the taking. So, also, it's like there's not a lot of places where you can go pick up packages now, too. Like the UPS storefronts have closed. So, I, like if you had if, now, if you get a package through UPS, you just get it. Like they, you can't, there's nowhere to pick it up. Yeah, I think you Amazon. Can make arrangements, I think I though. You, you can, can make arrangements with EPS and Amazon. You can arrange to be only on a specific day. Mm. So that helps. But also with UPS, you're allowed to tell them, please put it on my you know, back porch or by my garage or whatever you want them to do. Yeah, I think I saw an advertisement last week that Amazon's trying to set up some places in Chavoy where you can have it delivered there. And yeah, that'll, that'll be, be nice. Yeah, that's actually so, right. So Amazon pickup locker. Sometimes they're stopping wet, depending when you get home and the box is just like, oh, thanks. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, I, the, the only other thing that I would add, because um, we don't talk about it much, um, I know we shared it um, a, a couple times, um, but really the, the issues at the border um, are affecting us, us here in the amount of fent 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 fentanyl and methamphetamine that gets across the border. Um, and we've had some very major cases, um, essentially where Sheboygan is the hub that it's coming into directly from Mexico um, and then getting distributed to other communities in, in Northeast um, Wisconsin. So we've done some very good work around that. The department received an award last year at the International Association of Chiefs of Police Conference um, for criminal investigations based on a case that we had related to that. Um, and I shared with, I, don't know who, I think the city administrator 
Um, and the department heads that two weeks ago, um, we had a case where we recovered 3,000 fentanyl pills. So wow. it's out there and there's a lot of it. Um, but it, generally, I think we're doing a pretty good job. You know, I noticed something on the I drive down to visit family in Texas and on the drive there, I noticed a lot of billboards um, of fentanyl strips in Missouri and in Illinois, sort of big billboards of saying, you know, test it. Here's the local government. Strips. Yeah, like here's here's the free strips, test everything. And I was like, oh, that I've never seen that. And they were like all along the highway coming to coming up here and going down there. So that's quite interesting. So something mm. I had noticed, I was like, hmm, that's weird, but that's nice. I just wanted to, I just wanted to one, one question or comment. Uh, so the, um, we, you're talking about the involuntary commitments. And how has that, um, the, the ride-alongs with the uh, the mental health experts, how has that worked out? Is it is it is it positive, negative? Has it been good? Uh, take that, Matt. Uh, yep. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of my baby. They <laughs> really well. They oh, okay. have two shifts. One co-responder starts at 10 a.m. and goes to 6 p.m. and rides with a pretty much a first shift officer. And then a second shift officer takes the next person from 6 p.m. until 2 a.m. And it's going really well. In fact, I just met with the program coordinator at three o'clock. Um, my officers really like it because um, a lot of officers even, you know, that's their office. They prefer mm -hmm. to ride alone generally. Sure. And they get a, ride -a, lot, a lot of ride-alongs. Um, and so it's a bit of an inconvenience. They don't complain at all. Uh, it's serving the community very, very well. Um, the goal of the program really is to reduce the um, impact on the healthcare system mm -hmm. and um, reduce involuntary commitments. Uh, people, you know, have bad days and sometimes say stupid stuff. And that doesn't mean that they want to kill themselves. They need to be locked away in the hospital for a few days. And so it's going really well on both ends. It's really been an exciting time. That's good it's wonderful. For a follow-up on that, is there, yeah. so we, that's money supported through? It's ARPA funds, funds, the city for, and for the put funds towards and it. How long do we have funding for that program? The end of 2025. Okay. All right. Do we have a plan for after that? Or I know I'm asking a question. Should that be my, our job? <laughs> well, I think the plan is, is to really gather data here. So that's, that's part of it. There's certain data that both us and Elevate have to collect and provide to the county so that we can evaluate it. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think it's it's determining what value it does bring mm -hmm. and if it's going to be continued, when it should really be in place. Do we need do we need them 16 hours a day? Do we need them 24 oh. hours a day? Mm -hmm. Can we get by with 10 hours a day? What does the data really show to make it? And um, for the metrics of like. I guess the measurement of what is successful, is that something that the county has set or is that something we're setting or? We all set it together. We did, okay. Prior to starting it? Yep. Okay, got it. Yep, and then we provided for, for our metrics, we provided at least, a, it's either a year or two years Cal pulled and provided that kind of as a baseline before it started. And do we feel that it's, um, the metrics will read well? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> that's a hard question to answer. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I need to, am I looking for, hold on one second. Let me get the agenda. Do I, is there, can you do anything? To rec recommend uh, approving, uh, I make a Appro motion to approve and file. Second. Great. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, chair votes aye. Great, thank you. Okay, agenda item number nine. RO number 9123-24 by Fire Chief pursuant to section 24495 of the Municipal Code submitting a quarterly report of benchmark measurements for the fire department for the period commencing October 1 of 23 and ending December 31st of 2023. Thank you, chair. So uh, everybody has report. Uh, so uh, if there's any questions, I just want to point out some highlights. Uh, we were down, our total call volume for the year of 23 was down only because if you recall in 22, we had that storm that, that came through and, and I mean, 
we ran yeah. over 100 call that was like 130 or so calls that that one day alone so we're about 100 and change lower so that it all plays in, we're still increasing it's still on the trend uh we're increasing up about 15 percent but we're down from last year if that makes sense uh fire calls uh so we are still under 90 which is good um you know our, we're hitting the uh, fire prevention program quite hard so i think it's doing some good uh, but we shall see how this year turns out uh, the fire inspection is something that to note and be proud of is it's actually down, uh, which is great because the more we do the inspections, the more they're maintaining and correcting violations. So in essence, the calls or the inspections go down. Mm -hmm. So we hope that trend will continue. So you should see a decrease in the number of re-inspections. So that's good. Uh, training hours uh, continues to increase. Our vector solution program that we implemented is doing great uh, for us tracking wise, and it's allowing us to really truly track how our training hours are. So we're already over 17,000 uh, training hours, uh, the total of last year from the previous year, which is great. So be glad to answer any questions if you have any. Yes. Um, on the non-compliance and salt smoke alarms, uh, so like you had fifty six. Mm -hmm. So, the, so in other words, there were, you, you, you you saw like seventy nine. So that'd be more. You, so, you, so they multiple multiple units in in a home or. Yeah. So we the seventy nine are the number that we installed. Okay. We found fifty six, not necessarily tied to that seventy nine. Okay. Fifty six non-compliance. Okay. So, so yes. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is bring everybody up to the That's safe. Safe. So, yeah. like one on the first floor, one on the second floor. So <laughs> yeah. The basis. yeah. Okay. We're very limited. Again, when, when we go into apartments, we can't go into personal apartments, yeah. right? Sure. We can just do common areas, but businesses, the same thing. We try to keep them up to comply. Or if we go, if you call for a residence, we'll go assist. So, that's really where that is. And when you mean resident, you, your home, your, because your, someone can call you to. Call oh yeah, to yeah. If you um, obviously we're encouraging smoke alarms, right? So yeah. we want them out there. So um, if an elderly person, or even if you couldn't reach something and you couldn't, you didn't have a drill on that, we can help you install it. Mm -hmm. Or even if you didn't have one, we would bring one in and install it for you. It's wonderful service. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? That's it. Yeah, That's it. Good. Okay. Um, I can make the motion to uh, approve and file. Second. Great. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. All right. Agenda item number eight, RO number 89-23-24 by City Clerk submitting various license applications. Recommending granting the licenses contingent on, on clerk approval of the premises description. It may have already happened, but I was in court all afternoon, so I don't know. But as soon as they approve it, it should be good to go. And this is for the um, just the two that are on here, the B yeah. and the C. Yeah. Okay. And they're both the same place, so it's really yeah. kind of the license. Do it or shall I? Uh, okay. Struggle. <laughs> I'll, I'll struggle with it if Mo you want. <laughs> Motion to approve with staff recommendations. Second. Great. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. All right. Our next uh, meeting date will be on February 14th, 2024. We'll be each other's Valentines. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Great. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned at 449.